as the Krakoan era comes to a close, we seriously need to shake things up in 2024 before we inevitably head back to school. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda McKnight, aka Vampex13, but you can call me Vampy. Today, we're counting down the top 10 mutants who could lead the X Men in 2024. And one non mutant. Maybe. Let me know who you'd like to see lead the team in the comments. Number 10, Mr. Sinister. This is a truly bonkers pick, I know, but you know me, I love Mr. Sinister, and he's honestly had quite the ride through the Krakoan era. One that I'd love to see culminate in him finally taking his place as the leader of the X Men, or at the very least, a leader of an X Men team. Maybe one primarily made up of, I don't know, Sinister clones could be useful in the final stand, no? Currently, Sinister is trapped in the pit on Krakoa following the event of Sins of Sinister, but he has been communicating with Professor X, who still has a piece of Sinister inside him. Despite Forge removing Sinister's influence from all mutants due to Professor X being experimented on by Mr. Sinister when he was young, he still has Sinister in his mind, and the two are currently working together to find a way to stop the Sinister Dominion. If all of the older leaders like Xavier happen to perish in the finale to the Krakoan era, it could be interesting to see someone like Sinister step in to become a new leader for a future school or whatever comes after Fall of X. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, why not consider clicking that subscribe button? Seriously, it really does help us out, feeds the algorithm, and that way you get to stay in the know on all of our nerdy content. Number 9, Miss Marvel. I mean, this is kind of a weird pick, I will admit that, but at the same time, I think it could be kind of cool and cathartic for Kamala Khan to be the new leader of the X-Men. The downside here is that yes, she is much younger than most other nominees on this list, and and of course, it was just revealed that she was a mutant and ended up joining up with the X-Men, so she's also kind of new to the group and new to mutant kind. But for those who are wondering why she was even retconned in the first place, this actually has to do with Kamala's origin outside of the canon. See, when she was originally created, it was actually intended for her to be a mutant by her creators, but because Marvel no longer had the film rights for the X-Men at that time, they decided to shy away from mutants altogether, hoping to make another group more relevant even than their much beloved X-Men team and mutant kind itself. This didn't pan out as they'd hoped, but during this time, Kamala did become one of the most popular Inhumans around, standing out alongside those as important as Black Bolt and Medusa even, Inhuman King and Queen respectively. Even Quicksilver was made into an Inhuman during this time period. It was a weird time. So while some might see this as an attempt to make her comic book origin match her MCU one, and might be wondering why that even happened in the MCU, that's why. Kamala becoming a mutant both in the MCU and the comics is really just her finally getting the origin story her creators first intended for her to have. Hence, why her becoming the leader of the X-Men would be so cathartic for her creators and her fans, and so meaningful for the character of Miss Marvel. Number 8, Aurora. Aurora is a stubborn character, but one that I found especially interesting throughout her journey in the Krakoan era. She kind of came into her villain era while still also like basically being a hero, and while ruthless, she is currently of course fighting to protect all mutants as best she can in Alpha Flight, or she was anyways, until Alpha Flight got taken in. She and her brother Northstar are characters who often do not get featured enough, so I think it might be cool to see someone who is often underrated step into the role of leader. Goodness knows she has a strong enough will for that job. Number 7, Wolverine. Obviously Wolverine has led the X-Men before, but once again he might be just what we need considering how tough times are. I personally think Wolverine makes for a great leader in the right moment. For the most part, he's reluctant to lead and is more of a lone wolf, but at the same time, that might also be what makes him so suitable. After all, the best leaders are often those who show no interest in leading, but who aren't afraid to make tough calls. Number 6, Quanin. Another hero who I feel would be very fitting to see as a leader of the X-Men in the comics is Quanin. Quanin hasn't gotten much love since her days on the Hellions team, or Psylocke I suppose as I should call her now. At least, you know, not as far as I've seen. Actually in this era, she hasn't been featured enough, especially when you consider how much growth she does get in the few series that she has appeared in. Chiefly, I'm thinking of Fallen Angels, which no one really ever talks about, but which was a pretty big story for Quanin, aka Psylocke, and Hellions, where we saw a ton of character development and growth for her, hence why I think it would be interesting to see how she takes on the responsibility of becoming a leader for the entire X-Men team. Number 5, Volta. Or, you know, maybe just Doctor Doom. Just throwing it out there. The most recent issue of the X-Men, issue number 29, has me thinking that maybe Doctor Doom would be best to lead the X-Men team. Of course, they would never allow that. I don't 
think. And sure, he's not technically a mutant. So I'm really kind of mad to even include him on this list. But at the same time, I love him as a character and he makes some compelling points in issue number 29. So based on that, it seems as though the X-Men would be wise to at least mind him. If anything, Doom could perhaps be the mentor of one of his own Latverian mutants who could then lead in his stead, like the supremely loyal Volta. Doom currently is leading his mutant based team in Latveria, and even if the X-Men proper wouldn't have him, I would love to see him as the leader or at the very least mentor of his own Latverian X-Men team book. I think that'd be interesting. Number 4. Sync Okay, so Sync is already leading the X-Men in 2024, but hear me out. I just feel like Sync is actually a really great candidate for the role of just the leader by himself. And honestly, he has been having the best literal glow up in the comics lately, and I personally would love to see that continue. For those who haven't been keeping up with all things X-Men, Krakoa is not in a good place as of late. In fact, Krakoa the Mutant Nation is really no longer a place anymore. At the previous and also believed to be the last Hellfire Gala, the X-Men and Nation were attacked, and many of the mutants were lost as a result. Sink and Talon are part of a small group who remain on Earth, and they are currently doing their best to lead the X-Men as a pair, as a duo. Now I could see Sink taking over in full in the coming future. He has the capability both in terms of his mutant powers, but also in terms of his level headedness and ability to not only lead well, but also to do the right thing. While he initially attempted to hide from humanity the Krokoan secret of immortality, he later chose to give this knowledge back to reporter Benjamin Urich so he could report the truth of his findings. Number 3. Cypher While Cypher was clearly meant to be some kind of final boss or greater villain in the original plan that Jonathan Hickman had for the Krakoan era, the fact remains that he was integral to the story throughout. Even as a hero and as a character that later got more shafted as the direction for Krakoa evolved and changed somewhat. However, I do love how much Hickman loves Cypher and enjoys bringing him to the forefront. He's truly a unique mutant with capabilities that when written well can be actually extremely powerful. Hence why I'd love to see Doug take on a leadership role in the future, especially if we get, I don't know, maybe Hickman could do some writing with it. Currently, he is trapped of course in the pit on Krakoa, possibly because Krakoa sensed impending danger and wanted to protect Doug, but we don't really know for sure at this time. That's just a theory. Number 2. Talon Evidently, as Sync would make a great leader for the X-Men, so would Talon. As I said in my previous point, she is co-leading what's left of the X-Men currently with Sync. For those unaware, Talon is currently the code name Laura Kinney is using in the comics, you might know her better as X-23 or even as Wolverine, following in her biological father's footsteps and even at one point sharing that mantle with him during the early days of Krakoa. Her biological father slash she's a clone of him but also he's kinda like a genetic donor so anyways. This version of Laura Kinney is much older and wiser than any other version we've seen. She went into the vault as Wolverine looking to gain intel on those that resided there known as the children of the vault alongside Darwin and Sink. And while thought lost during that mission, and so was basically recloned, creating a younger, new version of her who had memories only leading up to her entry into the vault, the older version of Lara would actually reappear with her memories of her time inside intact. Lara is both powerful and, like Wolverine, is a good, reluctant leader, but she also has the additional bonus of honestly living longer at this point, making her also predisposed in general to be wiser than either Sync or Wolverine, based on, of course, her added experience. Number one. Shadow Cat. Call Me Kate Pride is back to going from just Kate to her old moniker of Shadow Cat, and I personally love it. Honestly, is there any iteration of Kate that I didn't love? I can't think of any at this point in time. She's pretty great all around to be honest, although her days as the leader of the Marauders dressed up as a pirate with tattooed knuckles will remain for me some of the most iconic in her history. But at the same time, in any form and under all mantles, Kate or Kitty or Cat remains one of the most capable characters I have ever met, especially among the mutants. She proved herself capable as a leader for the Marauders and we already know how amazing she is as a leader in the Ultimate Universe, so I'd love to see her lead the X-Men in this new year. That's about it. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.